Good evening, folks. Um, my name is Tim Johnson. I'm the director of the uh, Duke Energy Trails program at Rockingham Community College. And uh, the Duke Energy Trails program is, is a unique program that focuses on trail design, layout, construction, maintenance, and management. Um, we're doing continuing ed classes right now, and the goal is to eventually have a curriculum program there at the college that focuses on trails. Um, tonight, we've got Town Manager Michael Grant and Mayor Jeffrey Bullins with us, and they're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the mountain bike trails out at Ferris Memorial Park and sort of how they, they uh, got the idea, I guess, and developed it and, and got trail on the ground. So I'm going to, going to turn it over to y'all. Thanks. Great. Appreciate it. All right. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, welcome to Medan. We're glad to show off one little aspect of the town and hope that you're um, uh, available to learn about some other things as we go forward. Uh, we're, feel free to stop at any point and ask questions. And afterwards, if you want to ask questions, that'll be fine as well. Um, uh, anything you want to say to start off? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the first part of the program, and he's going to do the second part of the program. But uh, we're here tonight to talk about the Med End Mountain Bike Trail, and specifically in developing outdoor recreational assets. And what we were asked to, to do is to look at a, this is a local example of an emerging trend. This is not something, you know, we didn't invent the wheel here. We're doing what some other people have done. But in terms of um, relative to Rockingham County, we are a little more out in front maybe than some of the other communities in the county are. And, um, and, and we're pleased to be in that spot. That doesn't always happen with a small town, but uh, we're glad that it's happening with us. And um, some of you may remember this. Uh, it is related to, to biking. Uh, back when we started our Hayadan trend, the, the very first year, the Mountains to Sea uh, bike ride came through Medan, for, and they stopped for lunch, and we had that set up for them, and that created quite a, quite a stir. And that was kind of our first public um, exposure to bikers and, and mountain bike trail and, and the enthusiasm that that's generating uh, in a lot of people. All right, Medan considers itself, or, or we we think of ourselves as somewhat of a mountain town. We're not, you know, we're three hours away from the mountains, but there are some aspects of the mountains that, that we have here in town. We're in a valley, it's very clear, that we're between Cedar Mountain and Mayo Mountain, and um, we have some pretty um, steep hills for the foothills, and, and so uh, we have some of the aspects of a mountain town. We also have local restaurants, um, a variety of restaurants in town, and we have a farmer's market um, that's shared with the town of Madison, but it is in Medan and um, are doing very well. Mayo River State Park is actually, um, is less than two miles from downtown. It's actually 1.7 miles, um, not very far at all. And people don't think about that. You talk about going to a state park, you think you're going out in the country or, or uh, going away from a town, but we are very close to Mayo River State Park. Um, and as a lot of you may know, Mayo River State Park was developed on property, or, or the main node of the state park as it exists now was developed on property that Washington Mills Company, the, the mill that built the town of Medan, um, used for a park that they opened in 1947, I believe it was. And that was built for the residents of Medan and the employees of the mill. So Manan has been associated with outdoor activity for, for generations uh, because of the mill association. When mills created towns, they felt it very much a responsibility of theirs to provide uh, full services to their employees and to their town's residents, and recreation was a large part of that. Um, the uh, Mayo River State Park is one of the newer parks in the state park system. And it's a linear park that stretches from Virginia all the way down to the confluence of the Mayo and the Dan Rivers, uh, just outside of the town of Medan. And the Mayo River itself has uh, class three rapids and tubing sections, um, but there are two hydropower plants between, um, well, just north of town and the confluence. 
those do make it difficult for canoers, kayakers, tubers to, to come down the river. Portage is not easy at this point, but that's something that we hope we can work on in the future. But um, Medan has acquired the old mill site. I mentioned Washington Mills. They are the um, company that built the town, but that mill is gone now. It was um, demolished in, starting in 2012. The town acquired that last year, and we're looking to clean that up and actually create an access, a river access there that um, will be south of that, the, the further south um, hydroelectric power plant and will open up um, a portion of the river for people to visit, maybe even play in, and it's adjacent to the Mayo River State Park uh, river access there at Highway 135 uh, coming into Med Inn. Um, the town of Med Inn, as I mentioned, is very associated with outdoor recreation. We have over 300 acres of town-owned parkland, and I think you'll find that would be very unusual for towns, especially our size. We're about 2,470 people. Uh, but we're pleased to be able to offer those kinds of activities for our residents and the, the general population. Um, and I'll talk more specifically about one of our parks in just a minute. Uh, we also have some outdoor theme um, stores in town. Uh, Med Ann Outdoor Sports is um, on Main Street in Med Ann, and we're also home to Ruger Firearms and Remington Firearms Headquarters. Uh, mentioned Med Ann owning parks. Um, one of the bigger park, well, the, the biggest park that is in the town of Med Ann is Ferris Memorial Park. And getting back to the mountain bike trail theme, Ferris Memorial Park, even though it's been owned by the town since 1976, it was donated to the town by Auburn and Mamie Ferris. They, uh, Mr. Ferris was a former mayor. Uh, they had had two sons who had passed away, and they wanted to donate land to the town as a memorial to their sons. And um, it was Jim and Jack Ferris. The land was donated in um, 1976. So immediately after that, the town went to work to um, develop that property. And there are two baseball fields up there, baseball, softball fields, soccer field, um, four picnic shelters, two fishing ponds, a one-mile walking trail, miniature golf, and a driving range. So many activities that um, are on that, on that facility. And as it relates to the mountain bike trail, as that plan came up, uh, Michael's idea uh, from think, places he'd visited and, and conferences he'd been to that seemed like a natural fit for an underutilized park. Even though we've had Ferris Memorial Park for uh, 40 plus years now, it is still not utilized as fully as it could and should be. And so it seemed like a mountain bike trail was a good fit for that. And we wanted to utilize our existing natural resources to leverage economic development activities. So we felt like the timing was right um, to start considering something at Ferris Memorial Park and, and mountain bike trail in particular. And the timing was also right because the Dan River Basin Association, the Reedsville Area Foundation, Rockingham County, and all the towns in Rockingham County committed to um, a pathways plan for recreational trails that was part of a Piedmont Triad Regional Council and Dan River Basin Association project um, a few years ago. So there was a commitment from lots of stakeholders in the county to develop outdoor uh, resources and particularly uh, trails. And the Mayo River State Park opened to the public in April of 2010. So here again, more um, of a driver for interest in outdoor activities. And um, all of that coincided with the Cape B. Reynolds Charitable Trust looking to, they had a fund that they wanted to invest to improve health outcomes in Rockingham County is their Healthy Places initiative. And um, so as we talked to them about ideas of what could be done, they were very much on board with uh, helping with the um, mountain bike trail. And the Cape B. Reynolds Charitable Trust also is funding our farmer's market, which is another, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an outdoor activity in that you go visit it and it's sitting outdoors, but, but it does help promote healthy um, outcomes for our citizens. And the timing was also right because uh, in 2012, the town of Medan became part of the 
uh, North Carolina STEP program. And STEP is a program that was created by the legislature in North Carolina, and it was run through the North Carolina Rural Center. Um, STEP stands for, the, for Small Town Economic Prosperity. And as part of that program, we um, got citizen input. We had public meetings for about two years and got input from these citizens to help develop strategies that would drive uh, improvements in the town of Medan. And Medan came up with four specific strategies through the STEP program. And um, those four strategies were to um, improve the branding of the town, to promote downtown development, to create an artisan environment, and the one most particular to why we're here tonight is to uh, develop our natural resources. And um, our town council members were also part of this as individuals. It, it was, uh, the program was sponsored by the town um, and, and town council members attended as individuals and then there were reports back to the town council over that period of two years so that they knew what was going on there and so they had some input along the way as well. Uh, the final plan that outlined the four strategies was presented to our town council in October of 2013 and it was adopted unanimously. So um, I think one thing that helped us through this whole project was the idea that um, Medan has been about recreation and outdoor activity for a number of years and, and all of our council members um, are aware of that. Some, most of them actually came up, in, you know, grew up in Medan and very familiar with the recreational opportunities provided through the mill. And now that they're no longer provided privately, we felt a, an obligation to work to provide them publicly. Um, and then just a couple of points as far as the branding goes, our logo came out of the branding session. And if any of you are familiar with the Medan Art Center, um, that actually kind of crosses over. Uh, that, that has helped our downtown and it is also um, helping to create an artisan environment in town and they're doing pretty well. So uh, we're glad to be a, a, be a small part of helping to get that off the ground. Um, all right, and I'm going to take just a minute and read this because this is the, in step, we had to come up with the strategies and, and uh, developing our natural resources was one of the strategies and we had statements to go with each one of those and I want to read this because I think it sums up very well what we wanted to do and what we feel like we're doing um, with the mountain bike trail and with our outdoor activity uh, push. Medan and Madison residents as well as visitors are deeply impressed by our area's natural beauty and its recreational opportunities but up to now we have often taken them for granted. Even residents can currently find it hard to locate and enjoy the natural resource options. Local businesses currently offer recreational, tourist, and environmental goods, but the market is underdeveloped. Meanwhile, teenagers and young adults complain about nothing to do. Potential industries considering our area use quality of life issues for their management, as well as other metrics in deciding where to locate. Therefore, this strategy seeks to develop recreational and environmental opportunities and create new ones in order to improve the health and quality of life for people of all ages, attract new residents, industry, and tourists while helping existing businesses, create more environmental and tourist-oriented jobs, and strengthen our economy. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Town Manager Michael Brandt, who will talk more about the nuts and questions feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the process with the STEP uh, was that it was developed the partnerships that were necessary to put this together. Uh, when very naively, when I first came to Mayadan six years ago and saw Ferris Park and felt like it was a place that could be developed uh, further, I thought a mountain bike trail was about the easiest thing you could do because, you know, what, they're two feet wide, you just throw it out there and they just, bikers find it and they ride. Um, turns out it's, it's not that simple, and, and so one of our key issues of what we learned through this process is if you want a good mountain bike trail, it takes time, effort, money, professional trail builder, and, and commitment to go through that process. 
with DARPA, uh, DARPA Dan River Basin Association uh, staff support, they were able to help us with the Reedsville Area Foundation grant that started the whole process. We got a small grant that basically was to determine whether it was even feasible to do this uh, mountain bike trail. And that came through, they basically, uh, um, basically put it out as a risk. You know, they weren't sure if this was something that was viable in our community, but they felt like it was something that, that we should try to find out. So they were the initial funders for it. I also convinced the town council to put a little bit of money into it and let us go through that process. Um, that commitment, I'm going backwards, aren't I? There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so the, the current trail that we developed with the Reedsville Area Foundation was a quarter mile uh, little loop trail that was basically proving that, that people would ride it, that it was possible to do it on the type of terrain that we had and could be designed properly. Um, the rest of the trail is about three and a, three quarter miles. Uh, it has various hill climbs, rock gardens, beautiful lakeside flow trail. Um, some of you don't always see this view out there, but if you look real carefully, you know, <laughs> you can see, uh, <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? Now, um, this is more like what the trail looks like for those that haven't seen it. Uh, more of a rolling terrain. Um, you know, we think about mountain biking, oh, you must have to go up, you know, steep climbs or steep uh, hills. And yes, out in Asheville and Points West and, of course, out in the Rockies, that is the type of terrain they have. And that's what the type of trains they build, uh, trails they build. Those are also some of the most dangerous trails that you can ride. Uh, our trails are much more of a, a beginner, me, intermediate uh, level trails. Uh, which it opens up the field to a lot more people to participate, which is one of our focuses, was trying to get a higher level of participation. Um, the trail was specifically designed to shed water, which is incredibly important when it comes to mountain bike trails uh, and uh, trails in general, because again, if you just throw it out there and you're not paying attention to the terrain, you're not paying attention to, to what's happening on the ground, uh, it's easy for trails to quickly uh, degrade and you can see that in a lot of places that built trails back in the 80s and 90s where the trails had just degraded over over and over and over to the point where they have to close them or they have to totally reroute them in, situ in situations to get around areas that are uh, difficult to, to move in. Um, let's see, this is another example of the trail following the terrain. And this is, our, this is what's called a rock garden, for those that aren't familiar with, with mountain biking. Uh, most people would try to stay away from this, but actually mountain bikers, this is what they look for. They like those, those types of areas that they can ride over, and, and depending on how you ride it, the course changes every time you ride it. And we had a sporting event. This is one of the uh, kids that were riding on the bike. You can see how the, the trail is banked in there, again, to provide some speed, but it also helps shed that water. Uh, we had a lot of grant writing support uh, from the Dan River Basin Association. Uh, Jenny Edwards could not be here tonight, but uh, she was an instigator uh, to a lot of this effort. Um, we did make the decision to hire a professional trail builder. Uh, uh, Tony McGee is the gentleman that we hired. Uh, many of you are familiar with him. Um, and that helped us to think a little bit more broadly about what we were doing instead of just uh, trying to put something on the ground. Um, one of the funding sources for this, actually one of the most significant funding sources, was the KP Reynolds Charitable Trust. And their focus is, is uh, improving the health of the community, the entire community. Um, so when we talked to them about building trails, at that point they were just fresh into the county and their focus was more on the health, literally the health of the community. So they were focused on diabetes prevention or heart uh, and stroke uh, education and prevention. Um, and the, uh, so when we started talking about trails, they were like, well, we're not really sure how this fits in. So what we did was, and, and they got us thinking about it, was we have to make it so people want to have a lifetime learning and lifetime health of, the, uh, of themselves. And the way to do that through a trail, especially a mountain bike trail, since that's what we're developing, was develop the user. And because Rockingham County does not have a long history of mountain biking within it, we had to reach out to, those, to the community and do that, and so we focused on the students. So through the McMichael, excuse me, uh, through the KP Reynolds Charitable Trust, we worked with McMichael High School to develop a mountain bike club. And the, uh, the, the trust actually has provided us funding to build a bike barn, 
Uh, we have uh, about a, a dozen or so bikes uh, that the kids can use. We provide the helmets and we provide training and, um, and st uh, teachers to come out to the course and help them through the course and uh, learn how to actually do it. And it's amazing because the, the kids that were doing this, um, they were not the athlete. You know, that we, we specifically looked for the, for the, for the uh, students that were not necessarily the football player, the soccer player. We wanted people that, that uh, were just interested in having fun, being healthy, and, and learning a skill that they could carry with them their entire lives. And we've mostly succeeded in that. Uh, the, the club ranges anywhere from 8 to 12 students a year. And uh, it's almost always uh, at least 50-50 male and female. Uh, and, it, and it crosses over all athletic ability. Uh, some of them, some of the kids, I don't, I don't know if they've ever ridden a bike. They just, their friend joined, so they joined with them. And so we're literally having to go through sometimes and teach them how to ride. And it's amazing their progression through the year from, from getting barely around the beginner loop to by the end of the year, they're, they're having fun out there going up and down the hills. So it's been, it's been very, that's really for me been one of the most uh, exciting part of the whole thing because it's, it's introducing the people to a lifetime uh, exercise that they can do. And we're, and we're reducing that barrier to entry because we're providing the bikes to them. And they don't get to keep the bikes when they're done, but they do get to uh, be part of that and hopefully we'll carry that forward. So we had a number of uh, funding sources, uh, the Reeves Valley Foundation, KP Rollins Charitable Trust, NC, the NC STEP program had money into this. We've actually received two conservation fund grants for this project, and we've just been a approved for a regional trails program grant, which is through the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality, which will put another mile of trail, almost another mile of trail on the ground, sometime spring, summertime uh, period. That, that, so that'll take us to almost five miles of trail. Uh, there's the picture of the first mountain bike club. Mike, are you giving just hikers out there on the trail? Um, I have let people know that it can be hiked, that you don't have to ride it, uh, and it is a nice hiking path uh, uh, for be, uh, you know beginner level, uh, intermediate level hiking. Um, I, I know that some go out there, but we're not necessarily tracking that to know whether they're using it on a regular basis, but it is open for that purpose at this point. Most hikers don't want to walk the trail when there is good weather for biking mm -hmm. because, well, I walk the dog, she walks with the dog. You just don't want to be out there with a the dog when a mountain bike comes around. Right. But yeah. in the wintertime, I, I walk them nearly every day in, during the week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yes. I don't take my dog there that often, but I take her there pretty often. And the um, the, the the trail uh, along the lake, the new the new mm -hmm. set leg along the trail lake is really nice. Yeah. Both as an alternative pathway and as a way you can turn it into a loop. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's I correct. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. I hiked it with the dog. You hiked it. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know, if there's a lot of bikes out there, maybe not. But, but, yeah. there's, but there's a lot of times a day when you can go and there's no bikes. Yeah. The, the um, general rule of thumb is is that, you know, bike uh, dogs don't like bikes and bikes don't like horses or, and horses don't like anybody. Um, so we, our trail is not a horse trail. We, it's not built for that at all. Uh, at this level, Hike, mixing the hiking and the biking, it seems to be okay because of the number of, of users. I do know that there are some trails that get so busy that they actually uh, have rules and say, you know, only on, you know, every other weekend you can hike or, you know, they, you know, they, they change the rules depending on the day. Um, so that, that it, you know, if we get to that point with this trail, we're, you know, we, we got other problems that are, that are good problems to have because that means we're having a lot of people use the trail. But uh, at this point, you know, we're, we're not discouraging dual use. And as a matter of fact, uh, for anyone that would want to, to bike, the, there's a simple mile uh, pave, essentially paved or gravel uh, loop around the, the lake that you could ride one of the mountain bikes. Just because it's a mountain bike doesn't mean it has to go uphill and downhill. It can just go on a smooth surface. So I've also been encouraging people just, you know, remember what it was like to be 16 years old and ride a bike and just go out there and, and you can do a couple loops and, and not have to worry about the rock gardens or any of that stuff.
by the way, also there's joggers, the jog the bike trails. Yeah. Uh, there are several times walking the dog, I've come across some women, they, they're, they find that uh, the running the mountain bike trails is a better workout. Oh yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure that'd be true. Um, so the, uh, again, what we learned, this takes a long time. If you want to do it right, it does take time. The other thing that was important to us is that we were trying our best to put the resources that we had into it, um, but we were also looking for grants all the time. So there's been very little cost, outright cost, to the town to build it. It's mostly, mostly been staff time um, and uh, you know, volunteer efforts and things of that nature, but most of the funding for it has come from outside resources, and that's been critical. I do not believe you know, we ended up about a $70,000 trail system out there, and then when you add this next mile coming, that's going to add another $30,000 dollars to it. That's $100,000 for five miles of trail. Now, when you do the math, that actually is a very good price per square foot or linear foot, but for a community like Mayadan to have invested $100,000 into a trail, it wouldn't have been possible uh, to do it without the grants. So those grants have been critical to us. So always thank your grant uh, uh, funders. Uh, we do look for a lot of partnerships and, and uh, it, for it. This is another one of those rock gardens. And then we also uh, have had a couple of races out there. I'll, I'll go into more detail those in a minute, but that's one of our races. That was actually the first one. We also worked with partnerships. This is REI um, up here in the corner, uh, lifting the, the axes. Duke Energy uh, came out with about a hundred or so volunteers over a two-day period and I have never seen a group of volunteers, no offense to the DARBA folks that, are, that do a lot of work in this community, but those people worked hard. I, they were not from this community, they came up from Charlotte, most of them, um, and uh, you know, I thought we were going to have to babysit them the whole way through. Those people worked hard. They built, two, uh, they built that kiosk that you see there. They cleared a whole lot of the trail area um, and with Maddox uh, and things of that sort. And I, was, I was very impressed. So if you can get Duke Energy involved from their community side, uh, they can put a lot of people on the ground quick and, and build a lot of trail. And then that's our grand opening uh, ribbon cutting uh, up front. And I would like to point out the, that even though this is in Mayadan, the gentleman that's holding the ribbon on the far side is actually now a councilman in, in, in Madison. That's Mr. Silvers uh, that just got elected uh, and former mayor of Madison. Uh, so you know, even though it is a Mayadan facility, it's certainly used by the whole community. Now what we don't know, quite honestly, is what's the payback period. You know, recreational facilities don't typically make money for a community directly. Um, now, we are trying to recoup some of our costs for the, for the long-term maintenance by hosting events, uh, but we're not, you know, we're not going to make back that $100,000 in any time soon. Um, we are still trying to work with local businesses to market to the, to the folks that come to town, uh, and we've had uh, both success and failure in this area. Uh, we had a restaurant uh, that everyone, most people know, Countryside uh, Restaurant on the Mountain, did great business because those bikers would go by there every Saturday, Sunday morning. They'd stop there for ice cream when they're coming back. Uh, they'd go downtown and eat some of the restaurants there, but Countryside Restaurant closed. Now, they didn't close because they didn't have the business. They, it was just a choice that they made. The good news is, is next week they're reopening under new ownership. So, so uh, Countryside's going to come back, which is perfect because every rider that I talked to at our races that had been to Countryside Restaurant First, they had stopped there. Second, they, they loved it. And so I know that they were having an impact on that business, a positive impact on that business. And they, as a business, were having a positive impact on the riders because the riders were excited to come here because they knew that they had a chance when they left to go get ice cream or, or you know, get a meal. And, and one of the things about our trail that is unusual for bike trails is it's part of a large park. Uh, it's got all the other amenities that you find at a park. So unlike uh, a lot of the, the uh, longer courses that are in other areas of the, of the state, when you go, all you're going to do is go to that bike trail, and then you're going to have to drive somewhere else to go do something, where up at Ferris Park, there were other activities to do. And we have seen that play to our favor with people playing uh, you know, other sports. They hang out at the lake. They, um, they go uh, 
kids play on the playground, and you can trade off. You know, one, one parent can go with the kids one time, another one can go the other time. And that's been a big important part of this, is that, it, it, again, it's that introductory feel into the community. Um, and I mentioned the bikes that we uh, have for rent. Uh, for the kids, we also rent those to, to every, anyone that wants to come up there. So uh, if you don't have a bike, you can get on and try it. So again, that low entry fee. Yes? When, when are those bikes available for rent? They're not now? Um, weekends. Um, now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, during the weekends, during the winter. We, we just winterized Ferris Park last winter. Which what I mean by that is is that we always had to take all the water down because it's on a, a well system. Last winter we worked to winterize everything, so now the park is open uh, on the weekends. The bathrooms are open, the concessions are are open, kind of dependent on the weather. If it's good weather, we're open um, on the weekdays. Uh, excuse me, on the weekends. Now during the weekdays, the bathrooms are available, uh, but there's not usually anyone there. But if you ever wanted to rent a bike on a, on a weekday, we can make arrangements for it. You just have to call. Well, I know. I'm just, yeah. I don't think they're general. No, it's something that we have not done a very good job of advertising because we're still building that capacity in our staff to, to change how we used to do things. Because we, you know, we used to close up the park, basically, and, and so we're, we're changing that, that process in, internally. Um, unfortunately, grants for those types of capital improvements of existing facilities uh, are few and far between uh, because the general rule of thumb of a, of a granting agency is put something new on the ground, something new in the community. And so it's, there are some grants that you can get that do facility rehab, uh, but they're much harder to, to come across. <laughs> uh, well, they're, Ruger's doing other things for us that I, uh, <laughs> in different areas. Um, but you're right, the, the, the facilities overall need some updating. And what we're hoping, basically, when you have a park like Ferris that's been in use for 30, 40 years, you know, the facility wears down. And when we started to have a downturn in the people using that park, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy of downward spiral. You know, no one's using the ball fields, so why should we put $20,000 into the ball fields? Well, you don't put the $20,000 in the ball fields and no one used the ball fields. So then you go down another circle and they go, now you need $30,000, but why am I going to put $30,000 into it because no one uses the ball fields? So one of the, one of the goals of this trail, and again, naively thinking that it was an inexpensive way to go, was it would put people on the ground that would use the facilities so then we could turn around and say, okay, we can up upgrade these facilities because there is usage. And we are seeing that. You know, we, we, there's not a week goes by that there aren't people renting the bikes up there or, or going up there themselves and using the facilities. That's why we spent the money to winterize the bathroom so that the facility can be used all year round. That's the first step. Um, you know, this, what we're looking at right now is possibly putting in campgrounds um, at some point over the next year because that's again something that people want uh, is is having an inexpensive place to go so probably on the north side uh but behind the house yeah Yeah, we would probably start with rough camping or RV camping where they're providing that service. Um, but we're, we're actually, one of the things that we're just putting in uh, right now is, is a bike washing station um, so that people who do take bikes up there can wash off their bikes, which is, again, something that, that the bikers like to have the ability to do. Um, that hopefully will lead to some temporary showers when we have the bike races because that's, again, something that, that sometimes they want, especially the, the two-day races um, that, where they'd want that facility. So we're, we're moving towards the upgrades. We're just taking it slowly because of the cost and investment. But you're right, those bathrooms do need to be upgraded. I don't know if they've been upgraded since the building was built. Yes. 
I just want to add, I don't think you mentioned how much it costs to rent a bike, but um, we live in Reedsville, and my family, we've come and used the trail several times, and it's like $2 to rent a bike. Oh. So even if you have your own mountain bike, if you don't ride that often, A, it's not worth the trouble to put the rack on your car and get the bike on the... You know, and then you have to, by the time you pay to tune up your bike and you, you know, make sure the tires are pumped and all that kind of stuff, it is not even worth it. So just go to the park, pay your $2, the bike is ready to go, it's in great condition, you know, you don't have to drag it out of your garage and, and all of that. And, um, you know, Michael's right because we did exactly what he was saying. So my husband had the kids on the playground and I went and did the bike trail, God bless him. And um, yeah, and then we went another time, and I had the kids on the playground and throwing rocks in the lake and all of that while while he rode. So I mean, it really, I just wanted to throw that in there. It was two dollars, so just don't even there's, bring your bike. And there's a lot of people that are young, young parents that like bike riding, and they're teaching their kids to ride on these trails, and they're teaching, they're introducing to their kids, their little kids to mountain bike on these trails. It's so neat. And, and in that regard, some of our bikes are youth bikes to rent. And as a matter of fact, I just placed an order for bike helmets uh, that are, uh, we realized that we didn't have any youth helmets. We bought the youth bikes but forgot the youth helmets, so we bought youth helmets too. And, uh, we, and we've also bought two, um, this year the, well, I'll, I'll cover it in a second, but um, the, uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, that uh, it's good to hear that people use it that way because that's the way I envision someone using that park. Um, are we building a culture of health and outdoor recreation? This was a question that the KP Reynolds Charitable Trust asked us. This is a question that, that, that is the big question in Rockingham County. Well, since we did ours, Reedsville's built or rebuilt their mountain bike trail. Eden is working on a mountain bike trail. Rockingham County uh, just is going to announce soon that they're going to be getting a large donation of land and there I'm sure there will be a mountain bike trail there. Um, there's other trails that you know a lot of folks in this room are involved in. So I don't know if, if we precipitated it, but I do know that Eden and Reedsville, when they realized uh, that you could build a mountain bike trail with you, even if you didn't have a mountain, um, that it was possible and they realized that they could do this and they are putting those investments on the ground. So I think we have been the leader in, in Rockingham County on this trail and we're hoping to continue to be a leader by doing other things in the community, building other trails and connections uh, that again a lot of y'all have been involved with uh, regarding the, the trails around Madison, Mayadan and, and the one uh, that reach up the Stones, uh, Stoneville. So hopefully we are uh, having that effect on people. It costing you, 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 you know, like you got the grants and things for the, um, for the trails, mm -hmm. but you've also been winterizing <coughs> bathrooms and all these other things. Are you getting, and you're not getting a grant necessarily for no. that. So the town is putting money. <coughs> yeah, so yeah, is yeah. It, is it, is it a significant? Expense? It's, it's not at this point. It's not been significant. We basically just covered as part of the Ferris Memorial Park costs. Um, you know, we do have a little bit higher costs because we have people that are on staff now more times of the year. So that's, there's a cost involved. Okay. You know, the, the hope is, is that they sell a couple cans of Coke in the, you know, or, or something in the concessions that helps cover that cost. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you know, we're, we're not really necessarily breaking even. And, and again, it's not really our goal to break even um, at this point, but we are able to make those small investments to, to do that. So yeah. at this point, I would say the investment into the winterization was probably 5000 to $7,000. The extra employees, um, you know, are costing us a couple thousand dollars. And, you know, they're part-time, so it's not a terrible cost so far. The, our biggest issue, honestly, right now is the, is the shape of the bikes. Um, they have been well used, and we are working to have to refurbish them. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, that's, that's the one thing that, that's going to be a, a cost driver, because a, a bike costs anywhere from, you know, three to $500 to $700, depending on what type of bike it is. And, um, and when you're renting a bike, you know, you don't necessarily care for it as much. Uh, we know at least one bike came back without a wheel. Um, you know, so, you know, people are using them uh, pretty hard. Um, but we also are looking for bikes that we can get from the community, the, the biking community that, uh, you know, if they have a bike that they want to donate, 
you know, we've taken in some like that. And some of our youth bikes really are uh, modified, you know, small, not really mountain bikes. They're more the BMX style bikes. Uh, but that is, that is a concern that I have long term is the cost of the bikes. Because the, yeah. as they get used, it's just like anything else. It's a product that's going to get used up. So we have to, to work on replacing it. And again, it, it goes back to the staff and understanding what a bike, you know, we never used to maintain bikes. So we're not even sure how to maintain bikes yeah. at the level. So we're having to learn that. Uh, another thing that we have to learn is how do we do this? Yeah. So there, there'll be, there's going to be, I know there's going to be hiccups on that front because there already have been. Um, this was a post that someone made three days ago, or maybe five days ago now. I don't know if you can read it from there, but I don't know who, uh, Webster Irving you know, now is historic because I'm putting him in this uh, presentation. Ferris Memorial Park, Mayadan, mountain bike trail with birthday bike. So I'm not sure which, I guess it's the, the child there in the green, uh, but he got his bike and he came out to Ferris Memorial Park and rode it on his birthday uh, just five days ago. You know, that's a great sign for what's happening here. Uh, whether he was, you know, from immediately from Mayadan or just from Rockingham County, that is a, that is a great sign for this, for this project. Um, we've had a number of races. We've had, we've had four races there. Uh, two of them were uh, basically open bike races. Uh, a th one that just happened back in October was a dual athlon, which is a new style of racing, which is a, a mixture of running and biking at the, uh, combined, either run together or run as a relay. Uh, so that was the first time we've had one of those in October. And then in September, uh, excuse me, in May of last year, we hosted the, uh, the intercollegiate, the North Carolina Intercollegiate uh, uh, Mountain Biking Association race. Um, which was an inaugural event on their part where almost 200 riders from across the state of North Carolina, kids, uh, middle school and high school students, came to this area with their families and uh, rode basically for two days. They came in on, a, on Saturday, they practiced all day Saturday, and then Sunday morning they did their races. I have never seen so many polite kids as in my life. I couldn't believe uh, how nice they were. But they were so thrilled to be on our trail. It was unbelievable. Uh, it was, I explained it, the mayor was with us uh, most of those days. It was like you were having a wedding and you were the father of the bride because everyone had good things to say to you. And it was unbelievable how good it felt to be up there those days and, and have people from across, I mean, we had people from Wilmington, we had people from Asheville, there were people from Charlotte, Raleigh. They could not believe the resource that we had. They couldn't believe that, that we had all the parking, the concessions, they couldn't believe that we had the turnout from the community. You know, we had some vendors up there, we had uh, events going on. Uh, we, we gave away bandanas, um, the uh, economic development helped us with this. And unfortunately, they gave, they took all most of them. This is all I have left, or I'd pass them out. But you know, we we uh, you know, uh, let me show it the right way. Uh, this is the bandana that they had. So they're promoting Rockingham County. Um, this is our Mayadan bike trail symbol or logo. And something that I'm I'm proud of about this logo is, if, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's you can pass that around. It's a it's not a boy. It's not a man riding that bike. It's a girl. It's uh, yeah, it's someone with a ponytail at least, and 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 that was intentional. That was an intentional effort to to talk about the fact or to to promote the fact that that this type of uh, recreation is open. Anybody can do this, and and our particular mountain bike club is almost always at least fifty percent girls. And that's something that I'm proud of because girls drop out of sports, and this is a sport that girls can do. It's it's not, you know, it's it's a little bit different from other sports, but they can do this. There's no reason why they can't, and they can do it for their entire lives. So, um, so I'm I'm proud of the fact that we made that that decision to go with that logo, on purpose. Uh, we have three bike races scheduled already for 2018. One of them is in February, it's an open race. One's in June, and that's gonna be an open race. Uh, but we're also getting the championship race of that high school group coming back. And they have already told us that they expect a 50% increase in riders. So we're gonna go from about 200 riders to almost 300 riders out there. 
Um, so uh, the, it's uh, May, May 19th, 2021. It's that week, whatever that weekend is. They, they come in on a Friday night to set the course. Saturday they race uh, practice rounds, and then Sunday is the actual race. And everyone is welcome to come, and it's a lot of fun because, you know, you get in the woods and you're cheering those kids on. It's, it's amazing. Um, and, and some of them are, I mean, some of them are really fast. They really whip through that course. So it's, it's, a, it's a great time. Oh yeah. There's a lot of homemade camping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why we need to start a shower. We got to figure out a shower for them. So uh, that's the that's the logo of the group that that's coming. So what what are we doing in the future? We do have another mile of trail to build. I mentioned that earlier uh, using the uh, RTP grant. We are looking at the additional recreation, the camping. Um, we had a, uh, what's the uh, conservation fund offered us a grant uh, that we've been using to promote uh, Mayadan in the, in the area as an outdoor recreation um, that helped fund some of the stuff from our bike race. Uh, I don't know if anyone reads the magazine uh, Blue Ridge Outdoors. Um, for the last three months, we've had an advertisement of various types in it uh, that we've been running. We've got one more that comes out in December. Um, so we've been trying to promote uh, efforts in recreation. Uh, our website is getting an update on our on the recreation page to be more of an outward looking recreation page instead of just telling you about ball fields and things like that. It's more geared to uh, uh, someone who's coming into the community or looking for something that's more outdoors related. It's in progress so if you go there tonight and look at it it's it's got stuff on it but it needs more stuff. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have a lot of other activities going on. Uh, the, the trails program that RCC has here has really uh, hoped uh, th that it's going to progress our recreation locally by providing support for some of the things we're doing, br bringing people into the community that wouldn't normally be here. Uh, and so we're hoping to play off of that. Uh, of course, that's what this building is used for partially uh, by RCC. And then, um, we have our Washington Mills redevelopment, which is ongoing progress uh, down at the river. Um, Mayor mentioned it earlier. We are moving closer to cleaning up the site uh, within, I keep saying within 30, 60, 90 days, something's gonna happen. Uh, we have removed all of the, the uh, hazardous materials that were in the building. There was a, over 90 barrels of, t of various levels of uh, material, hazardous material that we had to get out of the building. We've taken asbestos out of the building, things of that nature, so we're getting closer. Um, and hopefully we'll see some movement on the outside of the building taking that stuff off. Uh, we did just get notified of a small grant received from the Duke Energy Foundation. So we'll be able to put together a master planning committee of the community to start planning out what we really want to see there. People have had lots of ideas about that site, but we have to start really pinning down what's possible on that site and start moving forward in that area. Um, so that's an area that we're focused on you, for our next couple years. Um, there are uh, allowances under state law to bury the uh, brick and mortar, you know, the, that type of stuff on the site within certain, inside the basement areas of the mill, okay. which is what happened to a lot of it. Uh, that's why uh, that, that already happened when the developer was down there doing it or the demolition uh, gentleman was down there. Um, so some of the basements will probably get filled up. But um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot down there. And so we're working with some local landowners that have some gullies they want to fill. And, and we're trying to work with them to, to move it off the site. And much like we approached the Ferris Park project, you know, we're looking to find as many resources outside the community to help us, which is why it's taken a little bit longer time uh, to move anything down there because we're trying to do it as cheaply as possible to the community. The community didn't create the, the, the waste. We hate to spend taxpayer money trying to get it off. Mm -hmm. so, so we're constantly looking for ways to do that. And whenever you do that, things take longer because you've got to build up the money. So, yes? No, I'm going to say, <clears throat> let's have a walking trail without life some <laughs> Somewhere like that, where old people who are afraid of broken bones can walk, and, and little people. 
<laughs> well, we. Two, uh, I already know what you're going to say about that. Number no. two, <laughs> I'm all for green burials. You have to have a green burial site. It, Ferris Park's got enough land that it wouldn't freak somebody out to have a green burial site somewhere. I wish y'all would think about that. <laughs> Then you can have families come to visit the site where they buried their loved one. You'd have lots of traffic in the park. Have you been talking to Quinn Haley? I think that's a good idea. About a month ago. Burial means green burial. Yeah. 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 No yeah. metal, no expensive coffins. Put them in a pine box and bring them plain fruit. Mm -hmm. And I, that's a big coming thing yeah. in the United States, so they say. Yeah. <clears throat> and the, I mean, I, I'm serious. I would love for somebody to have enough land to set aside some for that. And of course, you can use the same land over and over again after a period of time because mm -hmm. there's nothing that won't decompose. Right. And the third idea is a dog park, but that... <laughs> well, I can, I can address all three of those. Um, one, the as far as a just a regular trail. Of course, we. I think you mean you want a natural trail in the woods for walking that's not. Yes. Because we have, the, of course, the one downtown. Um, when I believe that when we do the uh, trails on the uh, Washington Mill property, and as we develop a trail corridor up and down there, I think there's going to be uh, certainly areas that are going to be able to be used by all. I, and you know what? At Ferris Park, there are these beautiful creeks, the outflow from the lake and then the creek that runs into. Mountain bikers don't want to just ride along the creek bed, but why not walk up on that? That is a possibility. Um, so I, I'll keep that in mind. Um, the green burial, it's funny that you mentioned that because we actually um, uh, sent Quint Haley, our, our park superintendent, is also over our cemeteries. He went to a conference in Wake Forest uh, regarding cemeteries, and he specifically brought information back about green burials and how it's becoming a bigger a bigger thing. So when you said that, I actually knew what it was. I, uh, uh, but you need to do it in a hurry. Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> so I had not thought about Ferris Park setting aside a piece of Ferris Park for that purpose. Um, uh, I did get questioned the other day, you know, what happens when we do fill up our cemetery? Um, and I said, we get out of the business. Um, but that is, that is uh, something that I hadn't thought about was maybe so setting I'm aside an acre. I'm serious, I don't know how much acreage you've got up there, but it seems to me that you wouldn't need a huge tract well, of land. God's acre. Yeah, God's Acre. That's what that's the typical. There's 270 acres up there, or close to that. So, so yeah, there's there's probably a piece that we could we could identify. I don't know. We that would be something that, yeah, that, that that's something for the council to decide. But uh, that's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought about. If Quint was at the conference, did they mention state law? You know, the state would have to approve something like that, and they're geared. I'm sure existing law is geared towards traditional burials, mm -hmm. so we'd have to find out. Well, yeah. there yeah, are well, three in the triangle. Area. Yeah, that's that. He he actually had one from there. Mostly in parks, I think. Mm -hmm. well, it makes sense. I could see where people would be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I mean, theoretically, you can, you know, you want to put your grandma in the backyard. You can do that. There's nothing that there's nothing there's nothing under state law that says you can't bury a, a loved I don't one. Think you can in town. Well, that that may be different, but there's no See, state but, law. I mean, I know a family that just started their own family cemetery mm -hmm. in Stokes County, but they're not anywhere near town. Yeah, yeah, we have an ordinance that prevents that, but you're right. In the county, it's it is possible, um, and if it was designated for a cemetery, that is possible. That's the, I, you know, every time you go to a meeting, you never know what you're gonna, what's gonna come out. <laughs> That's a new one. Well, and then this, it, this, is not, this is this is a kind of a digression, but I have friends in um, Florida, and in Florida, the law is that if there's a cemetery on property, it can't, the property can't be developed, can't be touched for 100 years. Wow. These people have found some land they wanted to protect, and what they're doing is they're burying people on it uh, because. 
Yeah. That means that no matter who owns it, it can't be developed because yeah. nobody will know exactly where the people are buried. Right. But so the whole piece of property becomes a <laughs> That is that is uh, is unusual. That's for sure. Um, the third question was about a dog park, and we do have requests for a dog park. And uh, on Third Avenue, we do have a piece of land, a uh, small park, that we've been trying to figure out what to do with, and that has been suggested for that to be a dog park. Um, we've looked into it. Uh, the biggest concern that I have about dog parks is uh, whether people would obey the rules without constant maintenance. And that's a that's a real issue that we, we just haven't been able to tackle at this no, point. The Bower Park, I was very surprised that they have one. Mm -hmm. But it's a very small one and yeah. they separate large and right. small dogs, I think. Yep. I'd be afraid of liability. Yeah, there's I yeah. never take my dog to a dog park, but a lot of people like them. I yeah, yeah, I'd be afraid to take my dog to a dog park. Yeah. But yeah. but the thing is that <laughs> that right now the uh, various um, the various uh, baseball fields around town are used as dog park as used as dog parks yeah. when baseball's not going on. Yeah. And so it actually wouldn't be that hard to create a dog park simply by putting some chain link fence about around things and leaving and having door doors yeah. that latch but shutting them. Yeah. You know? And especially if you added a few pieces of dog park type equipment, you know, things that could could be run through and things. Kids are probably using as playgrounds. Well, the problem the problem with dog parks is, is there's gonna there's a maintenance issue. I mean, you know, dogs do what dogs do, and and someone's got to clean that up. And if the people don't clean it up, whose dog it is, then I mean, staff has to do it. And I will tell you that there is no job that staff would love more than to pick up your dog's <laughs> waste. Uh, we had that problem in our cemetery actually, where people walk dogs in our cemetery now. And I think it's incredibly rude that, to let your dog go uh, in a cemetery. I mean, I, I understand that a deer and a rabbit may do it, but you know that's different when you purposely take your dog there. So that's a concern that I have about dog park. Um, we had a lot of help. And I've mentioned a lot of those folks, but you know this is the uh, maybe not even the complete list of folks that have helped us out with this effort. Um, and then uh, we, we started with the hay, the, the should have bailed hay bale. This was another bike uh, that was put together for that bike, rate, um, bike route that came through town. Um, the irony of this one and the hay bale one, the, the should have bailed, is that people were so enamored with this that as they drove, rode out, they, they were looking at this and ran into the barriers that we had set up so the cars wouldn't hit them. They ran into their own barriers uh, while looking back at the, the, the hay bales. Um, I want to specifically again mention uh, Tony McGee, uh, Round Rock Trail Design, uh, does a lot of work in Rockingham County. I know probably most of you know him. Uh, he does a great job with these sustainable trails. He knows how to build them. Uh, he's good to work with. Of course, for, uh, for us, Jenny Edwards and the Dan River Basin Association were critical to, to the grants that we've received. Um, and, you know, we, we, you have to do this as, as partnerships. There's, there's almost no way to do it without partnerships, but the partnerships just make it that much better because you bounce those ideas off each other and, and things build and, and get better. And so uh, we have been very, very much, um, I couldn't have done what we did here without the council support to let us kind of do something that they didn't know what they were gonna get and without people helping us, including, I know a lot of you in the room have helped out there uh, doing this stuff. And I encourage you to keep using it because that's how we get more of them. Do I remember that you had, um, besides besides the people from Duke Power and REI and people like that that actually did the physical work of building the trails, do I remember that you had a group of um, special needs mm -hmm. people? Yep. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, that, that was a grant through, the first grant that we received through the Conservation Fund, um, mm -hmm. and they worked on two different projects. We The grant ran through Mayadam, but they actually did a project in Madison and a project in Mayadam. Yeah. Uh, the project in Mayadan was was that new trail that you mentioned along the riverfront. Uh, excuse me, the lakefront. Right. Um, basically, they were they were um, the labor to clear the trail and do some of the the um, the rough trail work. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, Tony would bring in his equipment and he would cut the trail, you know, get that fine cut in, and then they would come in behind him and take care of any of the roots and things like that, uh, did that type of work. And then in, um, in Madison, they worked on the, uh, the outdoor school uh, classroom uh, there behind, is it Western Rock or Dillard? I'm, I, those schools run together for me. I'm not sure which one it's behind. Um, but the, uh, yeah, that's the, they did do that work. Um, and that was the um, UMAR. UMAR, thank you, uh, the UMAR at the Rock. Yep. Yeah, it's, I think it's United Methodist something. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. they're, they're trying to change their acronym because it's no longer socially acceptable. So they're, they're going to try to rebrand it. So they try to, when people ask, they try to say, oh, it's just you are. Because it, it's a double retardation and, and that's, that's no the, longer. That's not the for words that are used. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and you, you do a lot of work with them, right, at the, with the Arts yeah. Council? Oh, that's been... Great joys in yeah. my life is to get to work with the artists at UMAR. Yeah. We were we were thrilled to have them, and they did they did really good and uh, really good work, and you know proved that they're perfectly capable. Again, you know this is a, it's a capability thing. Anybody have, you know can build. They have paid contracts around. I know. Um, mm -hmm. I know. City of Reesville, for a fact. I think there's some maybe another municipality. And I'm sorry, I don't know yeah. who that is. And they do the um, sweep the sidewalks and clear things and clean, and it's. It's really fun to watch them come yeah. out because all the shopkeeps are running out and they're like, you know, yeah. hey, Jonathan. And yeah. they're, you know, have really um, become an important part of our community. Yeah. yeah. And they, we, um, we actually presented uh, them with uh, certificates when they finished the program at one of our council meetings, and and it was great to, to see them and, and how proud they were, and and, uh, and you know, and I I know I'm I don't mean to sound condescending, uh, you know, they, they really did work hard, and yeah. and they deserved what the, the appreciation, and they got paid for it. I mean, it was part, it was a it was a paid program. So, yeah. I was just going to mention one other aspect of the mountain bike trail. Uh, one of the slides indicated that we wanted to improve the utilization of an underutilized park. Ferris Memorial Park clearly has been underutilized. I've been involved in town government for a long time now, and I remember the time that we had softball tournaments at Ferris Memorial Park. Those were big weekends, you know, with hundreds of people. <clears throat> excuse me. And we have not seen anything like that until the mountain bike trail opened, and we've had the, at least the two biggest bike races had the same level of uh, excitement, the same level of participation, uh, to see the cars coming and going all day at the park and the people utilizing all the different aspects of the park was great from, from the town council's point of view because we've gone many years that we feel like, why are we spending money up there if it's not gonna be used any more than it is? It's like Michael was saying, um, he talked about ball fields, but we actually talked about it at the park's level, the, the size of the park. You know, the town of Madden with a 270-acre park, low level of resources to keep something like that up. You know, what are our options? Why do we want to keep it? But we've always come back to the idea that that is an important resource to the town, and even if we can only maintain it minimally until we can get back to the point that we can do something significant with it, it's worth the effort. And so now we're seeing that effort starting to pay off. We've gotten help to do something that's that's uh, good for the town, good for the community, and, and we want to see some things grow from that. So we are beginning to see better utilization of a much underutilized park. You're, you're getting good you're getting good attendance at the soccer game. When there's yeah. soccer yeah. there, there's tons mm -hmm. of people there. Yeah. And, and we've gotten good statewide exposure, not only for the park, but for the area. Uh, Michael and I have talked several times. If you want to go to Ferris Memorial Park and you don't live here and you put it in GPS, it's going to route you through Madison or through Stoneville. It won't route you through downtown Madan. So we have to direct people to downtown Madan. Um, so it's, it's a benefit for the whole community. Uh, that's just, a, from my point of view, an unfortunate circumstance of, of GPS, the way the, the road system is. But, um, but we're glad to have that facility and glad to bring people into the area. I'm interested in connecting Ferris Park to downtown and to the you know, River State Park and even Stoneville and, and beyond. Yeah. Could you address that? Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, about two years ago now, um, the town of Mayadan working with the with Madison and with uh, Dan River Basin Association and the Piedmont Land Conservancy uh, developed a lower Mayo River access plan, which basically goes from the 220 bridge 
uh, south to the confluence of the rivers. And uh, basically they tried to map out a route through that area for a trail. Um, that was the first leg of a trail that, and I, I think actually we may have talked to you about that at one point, um, but that leg was the first of a, of a larger plan that is a um, uh, uh, conceptual idea of wrapping a trail all the way around Madison, Mayadan, and with a leg up to, to Stonewall. Um, a lot of places, it, it gets used over and over, but it's basically an emerald necklace is, would be the concept of it. It would be a, a pathway all the way around that would route you, and as a matter of fact, Madison just finished the portion from the Dan River to Beaver Island, is that right? We haven't even heard the results yet. You know, we, I think we're through the Okay, so you're, I knew, you're, 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 okay, so it hasn't been adopted yet, but yeah, it runs from, uh, the second phase of that ran from the confluence uh, up the Dan River to Big Beaver Island Creek, yeah. and then up and to um, the schools yeah. um, using that corridor. The third, leg of that will be from that location up to Ferris Park and then over to Mayo River State Park. So that would complete the loop. Um, and then from there, it would be getting it all the way to Stonewall. So, so there actually is a conceptual idea of, that, of a trail that would do all of that. And as a matter of fact, it goes further than that. If you, if you talk to the, uh, to, when, when a couple of us dreamers get together and we squint, what we see is a trail that actually is um, a connector trail from the Mountains to Sea Trail that's being built in North Carolina that it, at its closest point gets near Blues Lake area. Um, t taking that trail, running up through Blues Lake, through some lands that have been acquired, um, using the bottom lands, whatever we can find, get it up to our area and then get it up to Stoneville. And then when you're in Stoneville, you're only a couple miles from the Virginia border or using the Mayo River State Park land. The, there's another similar trail to the Mountains of Sea Trail that's coming in Virginia that they call it the um, Bluegrass to Beaches is what, the, what that one's called. And it goes through Martinsville. So theoretically, this area could be the connector between those two trails. So to have them run up through here because that's where it's one of the places where they get real close together. Can, you know, in the big scheme of things, they're still 30 miles apart. But um, so there actually is a long, long term conceptual idea of tying that type of trail system up there. Um, so, but working on it, what we're doing right now is, you know, we've got the first, uh, first phase mapped out, the second phase is being mapped out. Um, the Washington Mill property plays into that. The Mayo River State Park property on the east bank plays into it, uh, Cedar Mountain, basically. Um, the, uh, uh, of course, we have to try to get around those, the, the dams, so we gotta figure out how to get across the river at different points. Um, the, uh, the state park owns the, the island that's right across from uh, Wall Lumber on the east bank, that's state park land. We're trying to figure out how to get across the river in that area. Uh, and then uh, the town owns another 13 acres of land. We didn't mention it tonight, but uh, the Washington Mill property came with another 13 acres of land that was donated to us. Turns out it's a landfill, um, an old landfill. <laughs> it's, it's not terrible, it's not the end of the world um, because there turns out that there's a state program to clean those old landfills up. It just takes a long time. Um, but that connects to more Mayo, Mount, uh, Mayo River State Park land that's behind the, the Kmart. There's a big track of land in there that the state park owns. Yeah, so, so, there's, so there is a lot of public land that's, that's in that area that could start to be linked together. There's also, it looks as if right now, um, you can go almost all the way from Michael High School from the hiking trail above the Michael. There's only one, I think there's only one little piece of property that's lacking to connect that to Mayo Park. So, um... You mean to the state? You, sorry, it's the Mayo State Park. Yeah, yeah. The Michael Trail and Mayo State Park, there's one little skinny piece of property in between. Right, because there's only be 100 or 200 feet. Yeah. Right. It's 200. It's just, yeah, it's like, yeah. That would be great for the mountain bike club. It would. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> 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 that might be
might be a place where we can have two. There's plenty of there's plenty of room out there to, to have two or even even a horse trail out there. Yeah. Um, but I think I mean it, it seems like each section is taking like don't you think eighteen months about eighteen months to, to do the planning? Yeah. Yeah. So so we're just about to the end of the second phase and then the third phase will be coming and and if you want to get involved the western rocking and rivers and trails group that's primarily what what they what we've been doing is is um, offering our opinions <laughs> for, that, for, for the development of the plan and researching properties to some extent and coming up with uh, you know talking to people collecting information about possible ways to go through to, to get a path to a certain through a certain area. That kind of thing. We would love to have extra help. And I have a Facebook page where you can find out meeting dates and places. Okay. Yeah, I, I think at least at least one, two, three at least there's like what four or five of you in the room right now. So you may have a whole committee. <laughs> the committee having the committee committee meeting. <laughs> so. <laughs> Specifically connecting Stoneville and Main End, is the, are there obstacles to that, or is there just a timeline? Like, what kind of time? Well, distance. yeah, distance is the big thing. Um, yeah, we're when when we start getting up that way, you get out of my jurisdictional area, so so I can't really speak. There's a there's a gap of county land basically before you get to Stoneville. So, I know Stoneville's interested in trying to get to the river. Um, and there are some very large tracts of land that if the owners were amenable to it, you could get a pretty good distance up there. Um, but it's going to be, a, it's going to take that type of conversation. And there are, and again, that's what, that's what the Rivers and Trails group is trying to do, is trying to make those connections with landowners. And, you know, in Rockingham County, you know, nothing's going to happen by, by takings, you know, you know, so it's all going to have to be voluntary efforts and, and, you know, can you find the right price for, for a piece of land? Um, so that does obviously slow things down because you want to make sure that that's the proper way that you're doing it. Um, but uh, there is some effort to that. I think, I think the way that the original loop around Mayday and Madison um, started here, so that's the plan to start first. Stoneville then found out that we were doing it and they want to get involved, you know, Stone, the government does. So um, I'm not sure how many people that are on the Rivers and Trails Committee are from Stoneville. Is, is, there, is there a yeah, lot of membership? I'm, I'm personally interested. Okay, well good, then, then, then you can have, then, then join the committee and then they'll have representation. Yeah, um, geography, will have, geography has worked a little bit against that as well because you got the Mayo coming down by Med Ann the Dam River coming down by Madison, so there's the possibility of following the river around you know, the Mayo through the dam. Um, so that was kind of a logical place to start. As you go north, the Mayo River is pretty significantly west of Stoneville, so you can't just follow the river up to Stoneville. Um, yeah. You do have to cross, go across but, but, the country. But the thing is that the, that the park, this is something else, Mayo Park is kind of a moving target. I mean, people mm -hmm. do decide to sell them to Mayo Park. You know, not most of the properties they're acquiring are contiguous to the river. But you know, if the, if the piece chunk goes way away from the river, they'll take it. You know, and and um, and it seems to me they're adding more property up there. Sort of, it's in the. I don't know if they have anything on the east side of 220 yet, but. Uh, not not no, north, no, not yeah, not, not the, the no. no. Not up there. The, we did a presentation two weeks ago yeah. and laid out the park, the what's park. been purchased and kind of what their plans are. Yeah, you could certainly call Keith Martin. Yeah, I'm sure you know. Do you know Keith? Up there? Mm -hmm. Talk to Keith about, about what is currently owned by the state park and what they're targeting um, to see how close it gets to Stoneville on, on properties. But, I, I mean, I know Stoneville would like to be connected into to the rest of this trail system, um, so it's just a matter of figuring out how to do that. And so what, what will probably end up happening, and, and we don't have to go in the order that we're going, it's just the way that, you know, Mayan and, and then Madison, um, I would get involved with the West Rock, and then West Rock, you guys would need to have to work with DARBA and the county to get funding 
to do either the next trail section up to Ferris, or if you've got interest in Stoneville, go do the Stoneville, uh, you know, master planning and identify those routes that might be possible to get up to Stoneville. And, uh, and Stoneville, I know, would want to work with you to do that. So it's just a matter of the effort. Stoneville up to the waterfall part of the state park, how far that's a good. That's a good ways. That would be a nice trail forward. Oh, yeah, that's a good ways. Well, I would think it's Is it eight miles or more. How much? Eight miles, perhaps. That's, that's just a guess. Yeah, that's, uh, Something like that. But for bikes. Oh, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. For walkers, not so much. The nice, the the little trail that John just put in, and it goes from the park on the west side of that little park on the west side of Stoneville into Stoneville. Mm -hmm. How far is that park from 220? It's really pretty close. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I thought. I thought it's mm -hmm. within where Business 220 crosses yeah. Main 220. Yeah. It's less than half a mile anyway. It's maybe a quarter mile. I don't the know big exactly problem is close. getting across 220, isn't it? That would be the place to do it is at that overpass. I and I, I think, don't quote me on this, so cut the recording, but. Um, I think Stoneville is already having discussions with DOT about underpasses and which underpasses are potentially able to be opened up for trail. You know, they've got a lot of drainage, you know, that runs under 220, and, a, and many times they're oversized. Sometimes they're undersized, but sometimes they're oversized, and there's enough space to fit a trail in there, too. And DOT is getting much more easy to work with on this stuff. They, they finally realize that transportation is more than airplanes and cars and trains and, and includes pedestrian connectivity. So there's, there's a lot more effort on their part to, to have pedestrian connectivity. I mean, they built a trailhead in Summerfield that goes you know, underneath the 220, the widened 220. There's actually a, a tunnel under there. Um, different story. but. Um, but they are. I, I want to say I've heard that Stoneville has had some level of discussion with DOT. Maybe not necessarily immediate, but when they're going to come, when they start doing the improvements that that are related to the I-73 designation, and they have to, you know, put in different uh, overpasses and things like that, that they're going to be trying to include some pedestrian access, because a, a roadway like that, like a, like an I-73, it might as well be a river or a wall. You know, getting over or under it is just just killer. So you got to plan that stuff out long in advance. But I would, if you're in Stoneville, if you actually live in Stoneville, I would go talk to their town administrator or town manager, uh, Ken Gamble, about how to get involved with them, and then also with the Rivers and Trails. Uh, that's how things get done. It's pressure by by the public because where we serve the public, so you know the, we have to know. And, and, and then we'll trade time on your on your dam for for some river access. I want to thank Mayor Bullens and Michael for coming tonight. No, no problem. For coming as well, and feel free to get some water, hang out, if you want to talk a little while. Thank you. Thank you for having us.